what's up guys so i'm starting this video in a very informal way um i was planning on starting this recording like tomorrow tomorrow is my orientation for my OBGYN clerkship it is july 30th it's 9 42 p.m um basically i've just been looking through our canvas site at the things that they say we should look at beforehand just getting familiar with how things work on OBGYN. It's very different from family. It's six weeks again, um, and each week is gonna be on a different service. So I'm looking at um, the, like my schedule. So I'm starting um, in, I think it's the high risk OB clinic. So for this week, I'm gonna be whoo, going to 6 a.m. rounds and then going to clinic at 8 a.m. I have no idea how long clinic lasts, um, so that'll be something to find out on Tuesday, I guess. But yeah, I've just been looking over some of the videos they recommend, looking at the readings and the objectives that are assigned to each week. Uh, tomorrow, uh, orientation is at 8 a.m. Um, probably gonna be my latest start for a while. What's up, guys? It is Thursday, August 3rd, I think, yeah. It's 5.36 a.m. Just kind of checking. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm tired. So this week, um, we've been doing rounds in the morning. Just check on them, see how they're doing, whatever they're admitted for. Like, because this is high-risk OB, they all have something that makes their case a little bit more um, uh, worrisome. Check their vitals, just kind of make sure there's nothing concerning. Um, and then we kind of go into the labor and delivery boardroom and we present the patients to whoever's attending. And then I go to the high-risk OB clinic. So it's pretty similar to any OB office that you would go to to get your prenatal care, except this office is um, just taking care of patients who are high-risk for some reason. That's all I'm gonna do today. And then I actually have the afternoon off. Good morning, guys. It's 5.08, 5.09 a.m. Gonna be heading out here in the next five minutes or so. Um, have to be at the hospital in the labor and delivery boardroom for 6 a.m. round. I'll take some snacks with me though because since I'm eating so early in the day, um, I get hungry a lot earlier too. <laughs> this week is a little different from last week. For this, um, you do rounds and then to my knowledge, you're kind of just spending time like waiting for delivery to happen or some other operation, some obstetrical operation. So there's the potential for more downtime. So I'm certainly bringing my laptop and just everything so that if there is downtime, um, I could be doing something productive. What's up guys? So it is 2.44. So I'm just gonna give you guys kind of a rundown. Um, I arrived around 5.50. So with labor and delivery, you're rounding on the postpartum patients. Um, so it's kind of interesting like I love that with OB you do so many different things and we're moving from one thing to the next but then it's like dang by Thursday I'm like confident and comfortable with what I'm doing and then like there's only one day left and then you switch to something else so there was some overlap like there are certain high-risk conditions that even after delivery you're gonna want to still be assessing for so like with preeclampsia you still want to ask those questions you would ask in a woman who is pregnant um, so yeah, just checking on patients this morning and then reporting to the resident. And then we participated in checkout, which is basically where we're kind of like updating the attendings on all of the patients. That was the morning. And then it's pretty much you're just spending time in the labor and delivery boardroom um, until there's a delivery or at our hospital, there's the screening room. So if pregnant women think something has changed or they just wanna get checked out, they can go there. Kind of like an emergency room, but for pregnant women. Um, and then I got to scrub, well, we didn't scrub in because it wasn't a C-section, it was a vaginal delivery, but I got to um, observe for a vaginal delivery, which was really, um, really amazing, honestly. I was so excited. The baby was nice and healthy, reactive, good set of lungs. So that was really, really nice. And um, I just felt really good, I really did. I felt great while I was in there. I just loved being there. In, and I wasn't even participating in any way. So that was that. What's up guys, it's Thursday, August 10th, and it is 5.46 right now. I just pulled into the parking lot. 
I wanted to record today just because like I think it's important that I record all the feels <laughs> and I'll say that so this is my you know my a.m. labor and delivery week so every day 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, and it's Thursday so the week's almost over um, I someone just pulled up and the radio is really loud I'm gonna say this first and foremost I literally love everything about this week so far but like I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tired and like I am <laughs> you know um, getting up before the Sun every day is really hard it is um, and it's like I'm getting decent sleep I'm not getting exactly the amount of sleep that I know I need like to really like get a full seven hours I'd need to be like sleep by 9 45 and that like rarely happens but it's still like less sleep than I really need and then um like usually towards the start of the week Monday through Wednesday like I don't feel it too hard some last week when Thursday hit I was like Ooh, okay I could do this one more day and it's like you know I wake up over the course of the day but it's just like that feeling oh trying to get out of bed this morning like that was really hard I'm gonna go ahead and get over there. Oh, the other thing though that's been really hard is like I've been getting behind on studying um, because like in the L&D room, like even though there's a lot of downtime, I, there's like they love to play music, which is fine, like whatever gets you through the day, but I can't study unless I'm listening to either classical music and it's the same song every time or silence. So when it's like pop or like hip hop or you know whatever is very distracting for me and I really can't study much so that's put me quite behind but yeah okay let me go and catch this shuttle um before it leaves next week on Monday I'll start the p.m shift which will be 2 to 9 p.m so working with different people um and it'll just be you know different I hear that more babies like to come in the daytime so we'll see if I find that to be true Okay, what's up guys? So it is Monday, August 14th. It is just before eight o'clock and it's like this week, just being at home at eight o'clock is so weird because I've just spent the last week leaving my home at like 5.15 a.m. while it's still dark outside. Um, so anyway, this is my third week of my OBGYN rotation. This so this week I'm on PM L and D, which I'm not gonna lie, is a welcome change. I didn't have any problem with what I was doing and getting up early. I like, I really loved it but it was very hard for me to actually like study and stay on track last week because my peak hours for studying are in the morning. So I spent all my peak time there. Uh, okay guys, it is 9.21. Um, honestly, the shift has been pretty busy. Like but anyway, it was a good shift. Um, I'm not really too tired. I'm like baseline tired because I'm always tired. Just like being out of the house makes me tired but I don't feel like worn out or anything. Um, the PM shift is different because for the AM shift, you do rounds every morning. And I kind of like that, I miss that. With the PM shift, you're kind of just coming in in the middle of a shift, like a 12 hour shift. So um, there's no rounds or anything like that. You kind of just wait to see what's happening, if anyone's gonna deliver, if there's gonna be any C-section. So overall, it was a good first day of PM L&D and we'll see what tomorrow brings. What's up guys? It has been a long day. It is Monday, August 21st. I'm still on my OBGYN clerkship. Today was my first day of GYN. So I am on Gyne Onc right now, or Gynecologic Oncology. And then next week will be Gyne Surge. Um, and then I think we have a few days and then our NBME. So anyway, it has been a day. Um, I left the house today at 5.50 a.m. The goal was to get to the hospital around 6. 15 ish. I scrubbed in for one, which is a hysterectomy and bilateral salpingophorectomy. Um, and then I just kind of observed for the other, which was a myomectomy. But it's 6.32 now. Um, so we, me and the other student that's on Gynoc with me, were expected to round on the patients whose surgeries we scrubbed in on today. Um, and honestly, the mornings are early in OBGYN, I'm learning, unless you're on night shift. Um, the residents round at 6.30, so we're supposed to round before them and then tell the residents, like, you know, anything that's important. So, I will need to arrive by 5.45 tomorrow. And hopefully I sleep really well tonight, but that's that. 
What's up guys? It is 6.41 on Tuesday, September 5th. Yesterday was Labor Day. I haven't filmed in a while just because, I don't know, things just got really busy and crazy. Um, but anyway, there hasn't been a whole lot to catch you guys up on, but I don't remember the last thing I did fill you in on. So I um, and then last week was my clinic week, so I was just in clinic um, every day. So my time was split between the resident clinic, um, which is PM only, and then the clinic of an attending here, which is actually a predominantly Spanish-speaking clinic. So um, it was definitely a little bit out of my comfort zone. I, um, what was really cool about being in his clinic is he's very big on like letting you do things. So like pelvic exams, um, speculum exams, swabs. There weren't any pap smears, but if there had been any, um, I probably would have done one of those. So that. Um, in resident clinic, I did a lot of fetal heart tones and measuring fundal heights and just kind of going through the basic um, set of questions that you would ask a pregnant woman just to make sure that there's nothing going on. This week, it's not even a full week. We really just have today and tomorrow. So today I'm on gyne surge, which is also going to be pretty surgical. I think these are surgeries that are done for other reasons, like there's no suspicion of cancer. We'll see how the day goes. What's up, guys? It is Sunday, September 10th, and I just took, or I just finished my OBGYN clerkship. Um, I took the shelf exam Friday, which I think it went decently well, but I will not know the results probably until tomorrow or maybe Tuesday. So I just kind of wanted to round out this video with like final thoughts, um, the resources that I used, um, how and when I studied, um, and just my overall experience on the OGYN clerkship. So let's start with resources. Um, so I use UWorld um, primarily as my question bank. Um, and then I also use another question bank called UWise. Now I had never heard of that before. It's one that our clerkship um, purchased for us and it's specific to OBGYN content. I thought it was actually a really, really good resource. Um, I'm not sure how much it would cost if you just kind of wanted to purchase it on your own or how you go about getting membership, but that was really good. I mean, like the explanations were extremely thorough and they were very good at highlighting the high yield things you need to know. Um, so yeah, that was great. Um, I also used Anki. I was specifically using like, it's a subset of a deck. So I think it's a part of the Anking deck in the on king deck there is a step two deck and then within a step two deck there's an online med ed deck and then it has sub decks for each of the um, clerkships so i use the OBGYN sub deck i also use boards and beyond so um i did not watch every single boards and beyond video basically what i did was so i looked um in the online med ed anki deck that i had and i would compare it to the topics that they were saying we should be studying each week and so for the most part, usually a topic that was on our study list, I would find in the online med ed deck. But every once in a while, I would either see like a deck that had a name that I was like, oh, maybe this topic is included, but I'm not sure, or I just wouldn't see that topic at all. So that's when I would then go to Boards and Beyond and I would find a video for that topic and I would watch the video and then I would just quickly make a deck from the Boards and Beyond video. It so that's pretty much how I used Boards and Beyond. Um, and that's pretty much it for the resources that I used. Okay, so next let's talk about how I studied. So there wasn't necessarily a daily routine, um, but there were things that I kind of did the same across the weeks. It was hard to have a single daily routine because every week was very different. Um, but in general, like I would try to get any like new Anki cards I had to do, um, I would try to get those done outside of my clinical hours just because being in the clinic environment, it's really hard to like learn something completely new. When I had PMLND, I had the whole morning to study and I was very effective and efficient. And so I would get like, again, all my new Anki cards done before going. Now, anytime I was in the clinical setting, I would try to work on either UI's quizzes or UWorld questions um, because those are kind of a little bit easier to kind of do and then go away from you know, go do something else and come back to. I would usually do two to three UI's quizzes a day. In the world, I did about 20 questions, 20 to 25 questions a day. For UI's, uh, again, like 20 to 30 questions a day. Cause they, um, so the next thing would just be like my overall thoughts about OBGYN and how it, it was different from family. So one thing 
that was very different was just like that there's so many different things that you're doing in OBGYN, at least as a resident. And I would imagine that's just because they want you to get exposure to all of the possible things that you could then go and do like a fellowship in and specialize in. Um, but I thought that was actually really cool to basically have four years to work in such a diverse and broad field. Not broad in the sense of um, like the scope of medicine, but broad in the sense that like you can do some pathology, you can do some surgery, you can do some primary care, you know, all of that is kind of mixed into it. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, there's a lot of early mornings um, because after deliveries, cesareans, surgeries, you're going to have to round on those patients the next day. Um, so that's just like something to be aware of. Like if you're an absolutely not, can't do it, not a morning person, then okay, maybe don't consider OB. But for me, like, I'm neither a morning or a night person, so it just makes my life complicated. <laughs> but even though I was tired, obviously, at the end of the week, um, I still was like, if I'm going to be up this early, like, these are the things that I would, like, I'm happy to be doing at this hour. So I really enjoyed that. Rounding on patients is completely new. Didn't have any of that in family medicine because it's pretty much, you know, it's, it's outpatient. Um, so I actually really enjoyed that, you know, seeing a patient. Um, there was one patient I saw my first week. I went and saw her pretty much every day. I didn't get to see her delivery, but then I got to round on her postpartum, you know, so that was really nice. Like, I just, I really enjoyed that kind of seeing that journey, even though it was just a snippet. But as an OB, I would have, you know, seen her probably every day for the three to four weeks that she was in the hospital. And like that, the idea of that just like really makes me excited. Um, in terms of like, there was nothing that I was like, oh, I don't like this, but just things to be aware of again would be like, there are gonna be early mornings. Um, if you don't like the OR, you don't like surgery, um, OB, GYN definitely has a decent amount of that. So just be aware. <laughs> um, if you don't like rounding on patients, you know, might not want to consider OB because there's definitely going to be a lot of that. All right, so I just realized that I did not record an official ending to this video, but that's pretty much the summary of what I was doing while I was on OBGYN, the things that I liked about it, the ways in which it was different from family, um, and how I studied, the resources I used, all that stuff. If there are any questions that you still have that I did not answer, feel free to leave them down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Not worried that I need to help you. Let's speak more. Let's preach more.